top 10 kidney disease and kidney health natural solutions. Taking care of one of the seven filters inside of your system is crazy important and a lot of people struggle in this area or slowly beat them up over time. The kidneys are a very interesting concept. I've taught a lot on them. Years ago, I was teaching in the veterans hospital here in the area to doctors and nurses. Yes, they need to be taught real health too. It's sad, but it's true. And I had the liberty of walking these doctors and nurses through at a nephrologist sitting in the front row. So I was talking about, you can't judge your, I was asking how you judge your health. Judge it based on how you feel or how you look. But health is none of those because you could look good and feel good and not have any symptoms uh, and still have cancer or heart disease. Health is based on function. If your organs can function well, you're good. So I went into the analogy or to, to the research and I said, out of Australia, I've learned this and it's in my book that you don't feel when an organ is shutting down. On average, and the research is in the book for this, you don't feel dysfunction in your body, 100% function, full function, full healing. You don't feel dysfunction until you get to 60%. That's when the symptoms, the headaches, the issues start showing up. But then I asked this nephrologist, I said, at what point do you feel kidney disease and kidney failure? I said, now research I've seen shows more like you gotta lose 60, 70%. He goes, oh no, it's more like 90. That means you can literally go all the way down to 10% function of a vital organ in your body and not even feel it. And most of you judge your health based on what? How you feel. So the kidney is a very sneaky one, bean shaped organs, responsible for filtering our blood. We desperately need them. It's amazing you can actually live with only one. Your body is incredible, incredible. But it's our filtration system. They filter your blood 12 times an hour they're working and you can either help them or hurt them and make them work harder so excess water unwanted chemicals waste in the blood are disposed into the urine filtered through the kidneys okay but you don't normally feel what's going on now there are some symptoms here let me pull up my list 90 percent of the time you can lose full function not even know it's happening but if you do experience any of these, let me break these down, you might have some kidney things going on, okay? A change in the frequency or the quantity of the urine that you pass, especially at nighttime, it usually increases at first, by the way, okay? If there's any blood in your urine, could be something going on with the kidneys, could be related to an infection, UTI, especially female. Changes in the appearance of the urine, that's unexplained. Now, if you're taking B vitamins, right, and your urine is more yellow, that's supposed to happen. Uh, those, those pass through you. But I'm, taking, I'm talking about, you know, maybe it's brownish or orangish or just something unexpected. Okay, puffiness around the legs and the ankles, pain in your back, especially in the rib area here, and it would be real sensitive. I'm not just talking about a little backache. Like you touch that thing, you're almost coming off the table. Uh, it can be real uncomfortable if the kidneys get inflamed. Pain or burning when you do urinate, High blood pressure is a warning sign. It's not definitely always correlated, but through my teachings on drlivinggood.com, we do break down the seven causes of high blood pressure and the kidney involvement is definitely one of them. If your kidneys begin to fail, symptoms start to change a little bit. You get extra fluid building up in your blood and the problems persist and amplify. You start getting tired, inability to concentrate. Generally, you just don't feel well when you're not flushing toxins out of you, oh, you lose your appetite, nausea, shortness of breath, breath itching, because your skin is changing, your blood flow is changing, bad breath, you get a metallic taste in your mouth. Now, there's plenty of conditions that can have some of these. I'm just saying, if you are suspecting something's going on with the kidney, these are some of the warning signs to watch. Now, as I said, those kidneys are working 12 times an hour, they're flushing blood. Don't make them work harder. So here's the risk factors. Here's the things. We literally have a simple list that makes the kidneys work harder. High blood pressure is one of them. If your blood pressure is up, understand what caused it, get to work on fixing it, go to the other articles that we have that break down, understand your blood pressure numbers and the natural solutions to fix the cause. If you have diabetes, huge strain. There's so much extra glucose in the system. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you have established heart problems, oftentimes it's putting pressure on those kidneys, especially if you've had a heart attack or a stroke. If you're obese, extra weight, 
lot of extra blood flow, a lot of extra circulation that the kidney now has to, a lot of extra blood it has to filter. So you're making it work harder. Makes sense, huh? A lot more blood, the bigger you are. If you're over the age of 60, more prevalent, have a family history of kidney failure. If it runs in the family, we've got to watch these things. If you smoke or a history of kidney injury yourself. So that's the breakdown and understanding of this very tricky organ that you can't feel coming, but it's absolutely necessary to keeping you toxic free, especially your blood. If you've had any of those symptoms, you might want to be aware of it. But what can we do naturally to one, get ahead of it, prevent it, spare our kidneys down the road, or if you're in the middle of it, and I have a lot of people that reach out, stage three, stage four, there's different stages to this thing. The higher the stage, the worse it gets and the less function. So proper blood work, understanding your filtration rates, understanding your albumin, your creatinine, where these numbers are, your doctor can help you through that and give you simple measurements so you know, okay, here's my baseline of how well the kidneys are functioning. And then we start in to making changes to see if we can get that number to go the right direction. A lot of times just managing the condition with a drug, you're managing it, but you're not making it better. So these solutions are intended to prevent you ever getting to this point, especially if you're a high risk, or helping you pull out of it, which you've seen so many people be able to do to improve the function of the kidney. So here we go, 10 natural solutions to prevent kidney disease or to help out kidney dysfunction. Number one, control insulin and glucose. This is by far the number one. You've got to control insulin and glucose. It's gonna take the pressure off the kidneys. If there are large molecules of sugar floating around in your bloodstream, slamming up against the filters, right? It's like the drain that's clogged in your shower with a bunch of hair in front of it. Do you know what I'm talking about? We've got to unclog that thing. <laughs> kind of gross. But those, if you can imagine that, that filter, it can't get through because those molecules are big. Now, some of them do get through, ends up in the urine. It should not end up in the urine having sugar in there. Very rare that you should ever have that. So. The harder you are, the bigger the uh, are in the kidneys by the bigger the molecules are in the blood. That's what's going to create problems. So constantly having your blood sugar up makes those kidneys have to filter even harder. And it is equivalent to water going down the drain when it's partially blocked. So we've got to get insulin and glucose under control. So if, if you are having a kidney problem, I would be measuring fasting insulin between two to six as the target. I would be looking at glucose ideally under 100 huge numbers. The Living a Daily Lifestyle will help you follow and help you to understand that you don't have to go keto, you don't have to go paleo, you don't have to be unhealthy about it. You have to eat real foods and understand what spikes your blood sugar and your insulin and what doesn't. And you need a period of time when you get that completely bottomed out and stay that way. Number two, measure, track, and change your blood pressure. It is shocking to me how many blood pressure sufferers are not tracking their blood pressure on a daily basis to find out what the heck did I do in the last 24 hours that made my blood pressure better or worse? And it's a step basic number one and shame on doctors and nurses for not teaching more of it. You should be tracking that thing at the same time with the same arm at the same angle each day, write it down and figure out, okay, what, did, what have I been changing? What have I been eating differently? How have I been sleeping differently? What am I stressing about? To figure out what I'm gonna add in a supplement, see what it does. How do you know what it's gonna do if you don't track it regularly? If you have kidney problems and a blood pressure problem, or if you have a blood pressure problem and you're worried about kidney problems, you better get on top of that thing. There's two great articles on drlivinga.com. One, how to understand and measure it, to know real numbers for your age, it matters. If you're over the age of 60, your number can be a lot higher for your normal. I'll give you the research. It's all right there. Seven natural solutions to lower it. That's number two. Number three, water. Half your body weight in ounces daily. Half your body weight in ounces daily. You weigh 160. Take 80 ounces a day. Yeah, seems like a tall task at first. Work your way up to it. If your kidneys are working to purify, you put more water into that blood, you're making the job easier. The kidneys like hydration, stay hydrated. Now, there's a big difference between drinking a lot of water and absorbing a lot of water. That's why I use the greens powder or the energized powder to drive water into the cells. Now. Use a little bit of sea salt to do that, okay? A little bit of salt is okay for kidneys. We definitely don't wanna overdo salt with kidneys. With greens, you're gonna get some potassium, but it's not gonna overdo the potassium. But that's gonna help drive that water into the cells so your body can actually use it. Your kidneys are made of cells. Number four, let's avoid some things. NSAIDs. 
over-the-counter pain drugs that it's in your medicine cabinet. I don't have a medicine cabinet. I have a wellness cabinet. You can check more out on that. NSAIDs, ibuprofen, aspirin, Motrin. These have been shown to create swelling <clears throat> in the kidneys or in the body. Electrolyte imbalances throws the kidneys off. So it's been tied to creating electrolyte imbalances, which is the major thing that your kidneys control. I got to get bad, get rid of bad acidic things. I got to get excess things like sugars or salts. I got to balance this body back out. It's constantly what it's trying to do. Balance, balance, balance. Acute deterioration. NSAIDs create all these things. Swelling, electrolyte imbalances, and acute, acute deterioration. PubMed research showing this. NSAIDs are terrible for the kidneys. What's this mean? If you have kidney problems or are worried about it, stop taking aspirin, Motrin, and ibuprofen. It's rough on them. Second medication, number five, PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, also known as the purple pills, Nexium, Prilosec, Prevacid. If you are on an acid reflux drug, there is massive research showing that you are 28.4 times more likely to get chronic kidney disease. I hope I just, what? Say that again, Dr. Livingston. If you or, or your spouse or your brother or your grandmother is on Nexium, Prilosec, or Prevacid, there is a 28.4 times more likelihood to get chronic kidney disease, especially when you take it long-term. The study showed if you took that thing for 10 years, you're in big trouble. 35.5 times more likely to report end-stage renal disease. So those acid reflux drugs, very dangerous. All drugs are dangerous. They all have side effects. They're all loaded with tox toxins. We're lying to ourselves to think differently. Pop, there's clear research on that one too. Number six, control salt, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, some people go as far as having a specific meal plan and the, their diet consists of that. We just wanna control that. Here's what that means, okay? Salt must be real. We wanna avoid processed salts. That's packaged goods. Anything in the middle of the grocery store. If you're eating some broccoli from the outside of the store and you choose to put real salt, sea salt on it, you're fine. You don't have to overdo it. But the processed salts, chips, crackers, grains, that's why if you control your blood sugar levels, you're probably controlling your salt levels. Phosphorus, there's many foods that are very high in phosphorus. However, if you're sticking to a clean, non-processed diet, you're not gonna be at too much of a risk there, as well as potassium. It's in green leafy vegetables. You do not have to overdo these things, but getting good, clean vegetables and things in in the first place, good, solid nutrition. So we just wanna control those. Some people later stages, you could benefit by going on a very specific salt, phosphorus, potassium regimen. However, science is very unclear on it. But there are things to pay attention to because your kidneys are involved in balancing out the nutrients, which let's go to number seven, clean up the protein. A lot of people very concerned about overdoing protein when they do have kidney problems. I completely agree. It would be another molecule in the blood pushing up against the kidneys. We don't need to have a bunch of excess. We don't want too little so you're under uh, nourished or malnourished, but we do wanna make sure we have enough. So clean, moderate protein, very clean. What does that mean? Uh, I use collagen. I use um, you know, grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, free-range eggs, wild-caught fish. Make sure the protein is clean because if it's toxic and you eat too much protein, now you're in trouble. Stay away from muscle milks and whey and the dairy and the very, very heavy loads of my protein powder is 11 grams of protein. It doesn't have to be a lot. Women, I wouldn't go much above 15 grams if you are in a kidney problem for sure. Men, 20 per meal. And make sure that protein is clean. Let's talk about a couple herbs or supplements you could add in to help those kidneys out. Number eight, marshmallows. No, come on, I'm not letting you have marshmallow. Marshmallow root, a fascinating root. Definitely not marshmallows. A fascinating root that helps. It is a diuretic. Uh, we have it in our GI support supplement. Our GI support supplement. It helps flush the kidneys of excess fluid. So we do this during the detoxification process and repairing of the gut. Very helpful. Marshmallow root to help remove excess fluid. So they are getting swelling due to kidney problems. Due to kidney problems, okay? Then I would look at the marshmallow root, the GI support. Helps the filters, okay? Number nine, milk thistle, love milk thistle. Liver detoxifier, but helps the kidneys as well. It's high in silymarin, okay? Silymarin concentrates in the kidney cells. 
where it helps repair kidney cells and the DNA of the cells, it helps regenerate the enzymes inside the cells. Fascinating. Milk thistle. So uh, it is in the collagen. It is in the detox. Living a daily detox. I think the living a daily detox is a good one for anyone with a kidney problem. Now, if you're in late stages, you're going to talk to your doctor and pharmacist. But if you're, you know, going that direction, and you can even cut it in half doses, start kind of ease into it. But you are literally using things like milk thistle to pull these toxins out of there so that your filters function better, which leads me to number 10, glutathione, which is the main component of the detox. Glutathione is the street sweeper of your body. It reduces oxidative stress. It carries toxins to the bile so then it can be removed. So it's removing toxins from the blood and from the digestive tract in the cells. So step one, glutathione cranks it up, pulls the toxins out of the cells, pulls out of the digestive tract. Step two, at nighttime, we use things like activated charcoal to soak it up. So then it was removed from your system through the bile, through the kidneys, gets out of your system. So it helps the detoxifiers detoxify better. Bolstering glutathione and that whole process of the living a daily detox is a great addition to help out the filters. Filters. 10 natural ways to help out your kidneys. We should all be concerned with kidney health. We need them for a long time. There's no coincidence that people over the age of 60 are at risk for having kidney failure. All of us will be threatened at this at some point. So putting some of these things in and doing these now and having a lifestyle that's kidney friendly can not only prevent it, but it might be able to pull you out of it if you're already in a concern. If you need help and where to start, especially with your lifestyle, grab the Living a Daily book. There's a copy right there for you. You can get it for free. And you can check out the store for any of the supplements that we mentioned to help you out in your journey to experience real health.